Good morning, family. Welcome this morning to Bible Way Community Baptist Church, the place where Jesus Christ is Lord of all, and the Word of God still transforms lives. We are excited and we are delighted that you done tune in this morning to be a part of our Sunday morning broadcast. As we always say, it's no accidental coincidence that you are here this morning, but it's by the providence of God. God has something he want to say and something he want to do in your life. And so the Lord has directed you to be a part of our Sunday morning broadcast. And we have a good one this morning. We got a good one this morning. Oh, we. I, 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 I wish you could have been here last Sunday. Uh, you're talking about the Spirit of God came down and had church with us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But uh, you got the next best thing because we're going to bring you uh, a portion of our worship service from last Sunday. Listen, we are living in a day and age where we are seeing a lot of new kind of religion. Yeah, we are seeing a lot of new kind of religion. And, but there's still the old time religion. What do the new kind of religion look like? As well as how can you tell the old time religion? Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna answer both of those questions. We're gonna show you what the new religion look like and we're gonna show you what the old time religion look like. So get ready, get ready, get ready. And uh, after our praise team come and they are gonna uh, give us a good selection and then I'm gonna come back with a message that I entitled Give me that old time religion. All right, get ready and be blessed.
Let us pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for who you are. The God who hear and you still answer prayers. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Clothing us in our right mind as we've started out this day. Thank you for a portion of health and strength. Thank you for how you've been breathing us over and over and over again. Now, Father, as we stand behind this sacred desk to preach your sacred word to your sacred people, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength, you are my redeemer. Besides you, there is no other. So speak to our hearts in a mighty way so that the lost can be saved. The saved can be encouraged and backsliders can come back to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. And praise the Lord. I think we can do a little bit better than that. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, uh, I, you know, I, I think that when you come to church, you shouldn't have question mark. Should I came to church today? That's a question mark. And then when you done got in church, should I sing now or wait on the other song? See, that's a question mark. Should I clap now or not clap? Question mark. When you come to church, do away with them question marks. Have a ready mind. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to praise the Lord. This is a worship service. We worship a risen Lord not a dead savior. So I'm gonna worship him. If I gotta worship him all by myself, cause he's worthy. I don't want people to think that I'm not sure about Jesus when I, no, I'm sure when I come to church. I know he's the savior. Cause I know what he done done in my life. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. And you ought to be able to speak for yourself. Amen. Don't be looking around and saying, is anybody praise the, you praise the Lord. You be the praise leader. Lord have mercy. Amen. Amen. I just believe that if you're going to do something for the Lord, don't do it halfway. Amen. 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 If you're going to clap, we need to know that that's a clap. You just ain't playing with your hand here. Go on and, and clap and give them some praise. Amen. And let child looking at you. Mama can say she's clapping. That's what that is. She praising the Lord with a hand clap. Amen. And the God say praise him with all kind of instruments and symbols. Amen. God bless you. It's so good to see so many 
here today in the house of the Lord, you know, I was wondering was people thinking that we gonna have church. And I came down here yesterday and I heard all them calls and then I saw all them calls on the park out here on 161. I said, oh yeah, they, they know. Cause, cause, Cause some of them may done went on by. Amen, out there. I know y'all was waiting to get out. I know, I, I ain't gonna ask you to raise your hand if you got out yesterday. But I know a lot of people got out yesterday. So if you can get out on yesterday, I say they gonna come today. They coming, they coming cause, cause, uh, amen. If they can get out on a Saturday, they can get out on a Sunday. Hello, somebody. All right, all right. I think you done got tuned up a little bit for the word. Amen. Open your Bibles this morning out of Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. When you find it, say, I got it. Acts chapter 8. Ah. Acts chapter 8 verses 5 through 12. Acts chapter 8 verses 5 through 12. And it reads like this out of the King James Bible. Verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that was possessed with them. And many taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. amen. Well, that was an amen goes there. <laughs> amen. Because that's what you want. You want some healing and some joy. Amen. That goes together. Amen. amen. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city, you sorcery and bewitch the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great woman to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regards because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believe Philip preaching, somebody ought to say they believe. They believe. Uh, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized. Amen. Both men's and women's. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning from that passage of scripture on this subject. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Tell two or three people, pastor going to talk about, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It happened on April 19, 1993, that we saw on television the death of a cult leader by the name of David Koresh. David Koresh was burned up in a fire at his Coke headquarters, the Branch Davidian outside 
of Waco, Texas. The local sheriff department, the FBI and the ATF, they had surrounded that compound, that headquarters for 51 days. They had that headquarters under a siege. Uh, nobody could go out and nobody could come in. They was trying to arrest David Koresh on illegal weapons charges. And there was also some charges of polygamy. He had several wives. And he was also having sex with some little girls. But after he would not surrender, and after 51 days of waiting on him to come out, the authorities decided to burn him out. And so they set the building on fire, knowing that the fire or the smoke would bring him out. But to our amazement, we watched in horror of how David Koresh and 79 of his followers was burnt up in that fire. When I saw that, the thing that came to my mind was what would make people stay in a house that's on fire. Why they won't run on out the house? Why would anybody follow a man to their own death? Could it be that Satan had to see all of those people. Could it be that those people had been bewitched? We know it as brainwash. A case and point of that is in our lesson today. Y'all gonna go with me, I'm gonna have to go by myself. Uh, our lesson today takes place in a satanic city. It was the city of Samaria. Samaria was a city of mixed breed. When you go back in the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 17, the Bible lets us know that uh, king of Assyria had came with his army and they had captured the ten northern tribe of Israel. Uh, Israel fell into the hands of the Assyrians and it was around 722 B.C. And the Bible lets us know that he left, the king left a few poor people there in the land. And to make sure that there would never be another uprising there in that area of Samaria, he repopulated the city with foreigners, bringing them as far as Babylon. As a result, when those foreigners come in, they always bring in their gods. And they begin to start building altars and idols. And they begin to worship these false gods in that land. And the children of Israel that was left begin to uh, mingle and intermarriage uh, with a lot of those foreigners. As a result, they began to start worshiping 
of foreign gods. They began to start worshiping foreign idols. And keep in mind, behind every idol, there's a demon. And so this city now had become a satanic city. But not only was it a satanic city, they had satanic preachers. Uh, we see one of these satanic preachers right here in the text. You got your Bible? Look here at verse number nine. It says, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Think about it. The Bible says that this man, he used sorcery. Oh, that word sorcery can be translated magic. He began to use magic on the people and the Bible says he bewitched the people. Y'all gonna go with me. Y'all awfully quiet this morning. Uh, uh, they, he bewitched the people. Do you know what bewitched means? The word bewitched means to be moved out of your place. This man began to move them out of their place because they were giving so much attention to him uh, uh, he was moving them out of your place in other words the mamas couldn't focus on being mamas no more because they was listening to Simon and daddies couldn't focus on being a daddy no more because they was listening to Simon the children can focus on being children anymore they was listening to Simon. Simon was moving them out of their place. It was hard for them to go to work like they were supposed to go to work because Simon was moving them out of their place. As a result, he had bewitched them. You know, also the word bewitched basically means to be moved beyond oneself or to be trans poured it beyond one cell. See, why do people take drugs and stuff? It's to be transported beyond one cell. In other words, that's what they're talking about when they're getting high. You are being transported beyond one cell. See, back in the day, we used to call it, you know, when you're taking drugs, he's on a trip. Uh, he's, he's spaced. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. He's spaced out. Sometimes when we see folks talking a lot of noise and foolishness, we say, they're just tripping. They're tripping. He's tripping. He's tripping. I, I don't know what they say today, but that's what we used to say, that he's tripping. And so these people was tripping. Uh, they was being transported out of their minds beyond their wit. In other words, these people couldn't think right because they was listening to Simon. Simon had brainwashed these people. And notice the people that he done brainwashed. Was it the poor folks? Because they always say, you know, these poor folks, they, uh, uh, they need church. Let them go to church. And, 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 and we think weak people, you know, they need religion and stuff. But, but big shots, you know, uh, they laying at home in the bed this morning because they don't, they don't need uh, church. They don't need no religion. But notice right here in this text who he had. He didn't just have the poor folks showing up there at the meeting. The Bible says in verse 10, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Notice now, the Bible says, to whom they all. Notice the whole city. 
Notice, I, when you check out this word all in the Greek, you know what it means? All. When you check it out, you can check it out in the Hebrew. Do you know what it means? All. You can even check it out in the English. Do you know what it means? It just means all. It means everybody. Uh, the rich and the poor. The educated and the uneducated. The haves and the not have. Those that was in the crowd and those that was outside of the crowd and the clique. And so this man had them all and noticed the sad thing about this story is that they thought that he was truly a man of God. And he was using the power of God. In other words, they had mistaken satanic magic, his magic for God's miracle. They was thinking that he was working miracles. But in all actuality, he was working magic. Lord have mercy. And, and notice, it, it, it just wasn't for one or two weeks. I mean, you look at verse number 11, it says, and to him they had regards because that of a long time. Is that what your Bible say? Yes, it, it wasn't a short time. It wasn't just a couple of weeks. The Bible says he had them for a long time. He had bewitched them with sorcery. Oh, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. This man is working his magic on these people. He had them under his spell. Oh, if you can just permit me to use my sanctified imagination this morning. I can imagine this man working his magic on these people and whatever Simon wanted them to do, they would do it. Uh, if, if Simon said, and now next week I need y'all to bring me some sheep. Everybody would bring a sheep. All because Simon done said. If, if, if Simon said, now next week I need y'all to bring me the donkeys. And everybody would bring some donkeys. All because Simon done said. And then next week he said, listen, I need y'all to bring me your best ox. Oh, now, they need that ox. You know, that ox is just like a, a big Ford pickup. If you're a farmer, you're going to need a big Ford, you know, F-150 or something. Uh, uh, and, and this man had these people bringing oxen and whatever else that he wanted them to bring. And he may say, I need some better transportation, better than these donkeys. So bring me your best horses. And they would bring their best horses because Simon done said. And then Simon, because he, he fooled with the, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, he started looking out there among the congregation. He started seeing them pretty ladies out there. Simon started saying, let me have your wife here. And the man would release his wife to Simon all because Simon done said. Or uh, he'll look at this daughter over here and say, let me have uh, that daughter there. And the man would release his daughter to Simon because Simon done said. If Simon said, let me have these necklaces and your ring, they would uh, relinquish their necklace and rings because Simon done said. And see, Simon was getting filthy rich off of these people. It was highway robbery and it was nothing they could do about it because they was operating under his spell. They was doing whatever Simon done said. They done got themselves in something that they can't get out of all because they was a part of a satanic city following a satanic preacher who was working satanic power and they in some and they can't get out all because now Simon done said. 
But ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to be too hard on these Sumerians because the same thing is happening today. So we can't really just talk about the Sumerian people because we see the same identical stuff happening today. We got satanic cities, we got satanic preachers, and we're, the, we're seeing them use satanic power. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, it used to be if you want to see a pagan temple, let's say you want to see a Hindu temple, you had to go to India to see a Hindu temple. Or if you want to see a Buddhist temple, you had to go to Japan to see a Buddhist temple. If you want to see a Muslim mosque, you had to go to like Saudi Arabia or the Middle East in order to see a Muslim mosque. But today, ladies and gentlemen, it's all in your neighborhood. In almost every major city, you can see almost any and every kind of religion. You can see almost any kind of pagan temple right in your neighborhood. See, we don't live in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood anymore. It's totally different now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, right here at Bible Way, you just think about it. You can go a half a mile to the south here and you will see the largest Muslim mosque in the state of Texas. Yeah. Or if you don't want to see the Muslim mosque, if you want to see a Hindu mosque, you just go northwest for about a mile and a half, right off 161, right up here, and you'll see a Hindu yeah. temple. Yeah. Or if you want to see a Buddhist temple, you just go two miles and a half south of Bible Way here and right over in the Bear Creek community you will see one of the biggest Buddhas set in there in front of a Buddhist temple. Yeah. What I'm trying to get you to see you don't have to go overseas today to see paganism. It's right here amongst of us. Yeah. Our cities now are becoming satanic cities. What did I say earlier? Because wherever you see a false worship going on and idols, there's demons behind it. So we got satanic cities. How did it get that way? It's because we rejected God. We turn our back on God. We expel God out of our schools. We kick God out of our city government. We kick God even out of some of our churches. We trying to be popular rather than being biblical. And as a result, God done went out. But when God goes out, the devil comes in. And so now we got satanic cities. But we also got satanic preachers. See, the way the devil brings forth a stronghold on a city is by using preachers. Lord have mercy. And I'm not just talking about satanic preachers like at the Hindu temple or there at the Muslim mosque or there at the Buddhist temple. I'm talking about uh, how Satan is working right in our churches today. I'm talking about Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal churches, non-denominational church, international ministry kind of churches. Uh, Satan is working uh, and he's being busy right among our ministers today. Oh yeah, and see, uh, one of the ways that Satan is working, he's working through the ministers by getting the minister to chase popularity. Yeah. To be popular. Yeah. And see, when you're trying to be popular, you're not going to be biblical. Jesus said you better be careful when, they are, when men are speaking well of you. Yeah, yeah, because you're trying to be popular rather than being biblical. 
and see when you are popular then you have to cut back on the Bible you can't preach the whole word of God because the Bible is gonna hit everybody when you preach the whole word of God so in order to not run people up or make people stay then you don't really preach the whole Bible you just give them just a little nugget of the Bible to call it the Bible but you're not really preaching the Bible oh ladies and gentlemen that's what's happening today in our church and when you listen to the average preacher that's preaching on the radio and on television today over two-thirds of the Bible is missing yes. you very seldom hear preaching about sin yes. sin is missing right. you very seldom hear them talking about repent of your sin that repentance is missing yes. you very seldom talk about crucifying yourself and picking up your cross and following Jesus that kind of preaching there is missing very seldom you'll hear them talk about the judgment of God the judgment of God is missing they don't want to talk about hell uh, hell is missing in their preaching you know I, I was raised on the kind of preaching it's holiness or hell you either get holy or you're gonna go to hell but you don't hear that holiness or hell anymore it used to be preachers used to talk about you're gonna have to get right or you're gonna get left if you don't want to get left you better get right but we don't hear that kind of preaching today people that they they just want to be popular but when you're popular you're no longer biblical I heard I heard a preacher who got a mega church and if I called his name you wouldn't know him this preacher he came out he says they always criticizing me for not preaching on sin he said, but I don't need to come here and preach to you about sin because you already know that you are a sinner. I say, no, nah, they don't. <laughs> Not the average person. The average person don't think that they are a sinner. That was a satanic statement that you made, brother. See, if you ask the average person, that you walk up to them and say, listen, if you die today, do you think God will let you into his heaven? And they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm, I think, I, I, and you ask them, why not? It's because I ain't that bad. <laughs> See, in other words, they are no longer using God's standard as the measurement but now they are using man's standard. So they're comparing themselves now against other men's. So because I ain't done what this person done done, then I think God is gonna let me in heaven. And uh, see, I ain't, see what, what Hitler did, now that's a sinner. Yeah, he done killed six million Jews. See, that's a sinner of what Saddam Hussein done by poisoning all his own people. See, that's a sinner. Or either they'll watch what a person do on the evening news. That person done killed somebody. They say, now nah, that's a sinner. He done shot somebody. They say, now nah, that's a sinner. Uh, done stabbed somebody to death. They say, that's a sinner. See, I, I ain't like that. I ain't never that bad. You know, I may drink a little bit, may smoke a little weed, I may cheat, you know, a little bit. You know, I may lie, tell a little white lie every now and then. I may, I may fornicate a little bit, but, but I ain't that bad. I ain't that bad. I ain't that bad. I ain't that bad. In other words, they're just looking at what they do as a mistake, you know, but I'm going to get it together one day. I'm going to get it together. But, but that ain't no mistake. Lying, ain't, it, it, it's not a mistake. That's a sin. Cheating is not a mistake. That's a sin. Fornicating is not a mistake. That's so not a mistake. That's a sin. And they need to be told 
that what you call an a mistake is a sin. Is a sin. Yeah. And, and even if you live that perfect life from this point on, you will still die and bust hell wide open. Why is that? Because you are a born sinner. See, your mama was a sinner. Your daddy was a sinner. Your grandmama, your granddaddy, they was a sinner. All the way back to Adam was a sinner. And because they was a sinner, when you was born, you was a born sinner. And unless you get born again, you're going to die and bust hell wide open. Now, they need to be told that. They need to be told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's what they need to be told. But see, people don't want to hear that. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 the mega preacher uh, don't even want to hear that he's not preaching the Bible. Because he thinks, because I must be doing something right. Look at all these people coming to my church. Yeah. And then uh, 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 the, uh, the people, you can't tell them, hey, uh, uh, are you following, you know, the wrong man? Yeah, that guy ain't preaching the Bible. They say, uh, uh look at all these other people. Look at all these other people. See, we go to a big church. And so it's, it's hard to talk to somebody who go to a church that's bigger than your church. But you need to remind them that bigness is not the criteria for being right with God. Just because something is big, don't make it right. This man had the biggest ministry in town. Simon had everybody coming there to his ministry and he was leading them straight to hell. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we got uh, satanic preachers today uh, in satanic cities, but they are using satanic powers. And I ain't got time to talk about all the powers today, but I'm going to throw two out there. One is music. They're using a lot of satanic music. See, a lot of preachers today, they're using entertainment to draw people. They are turning the music up and turning the lights down. And they're blacking out the place. And it's darkened out. And when you walk in there sometime, it's so dark, you're wondering, is this a church or is this a nightclub? And see, the Bible tells us that God dwells in the light. It says man uh, prefers darkness rather than light because his deeds are evil. If, if somebody is enjoying darkness, then that lets me know you got something to hide. Your deed is evil. Lord have mercy. But because the band is playing, and the beat is good. And the house is rocking. It's packing out the house. A lot of people. Preachers on board with it. Oh, they turning their church uh, inside out now. They turning down the lights. And they are turning up the music. And they just rocking it. They're getting it to rock in the house of the Lord. They're doing all kind of dances. And it ain't, they, they may call it a holy dance, but back in my day, they call it the camel walk. Lord have mercy. The Bible says it's nothing new under the sun but newsflash just because the music is sounding good and you don't say it some nice things in the song about Jesus that don't make that a Christian song just because it makes you feel so good That don't mean 
that that's coming from the Holy Spirit. See, the devil, keep in mind, he directed the music ministry in heaven. So the devil know how to make you feel good. Lord have mercy. And see what the devil often do, he uses the music as a setup to work his magic. Lord have mercy. See, when you hear music, it disarms you. And then you open up your mind to it. And it sucks you on in there. And then the man can come there and work his magic. See, the music is just a setup for him to work his magic. And what we are calling a miracle, man, then you see the miracle, is really satanic magic that's taking place in the church. We're seeing people falling out, being slain in the spirit, they call it. Or we're seeing all kind of miracles. But I stopped by to tell you today, it is satanic magic. It's satanic powers that's operating the day in the church. And then you see people start doing some strange things in the church, all because uh, they are operating under the spell of the apostle, or right. uh, under the spell of the bishop, or under the spell of the prophet. They are operating under his spell. And if the apostles say, bring me $50, they'll rush on down there and give $50. If the apostles say, give me $100, they rush on down there and give $100. If the apostles say, give me $500, they rush on down there and give $500. If the apostles say, give me $1,000, they'll go in their checkbook and write a check for $1,000. Or if they don't have uh, a, a check, they'll go ahead and put it on the credit card and give a thousand dollars. And whatever the apostles say, they'll do it because the apostle is God's man in their mind. And whatever he say, if he say, I need y'all to help me get a mansion, they'll help him get a mansion. Even though uh, they can't even afford a one bedroom efficiency apartment, they'll try their best to help that man get a mansion. They'll try their best to help him. If he say, I need y'all to help me get a $100,000 car, they'll, they'll do what they can to help him get that $100,000 car. All because the apostle done said. And because the apostle done said, I need y'all to help me get a jet plane because I'm too big to be hanging out at the airport with common people. And, and they'll help this man get a jet plane all because the apostle said. And if the apostle said, I need y'all to use uh, uh, your tax return money and bring me that refund money. They'll bring that refund money. We'll look at that. Now that's crazy there, but they don't see that as crazy because the apostle done said. But I stopped by to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm too old to be playing Simon Says when I go to church. I don't care if his name is the apostle. I don't care if his name is Reverend. I don't care if his name is Bishop. I don't care if his name is Prophet. I don't care what his name is. I ain't playing no Simon Says when I go to church. I ain't going by what Simon done said. I'm going by what the word done said. That's why I want the old time religion. I ain't running after that new stuff. I ain't running after that new preacher that done came to town. I ain't running after the new ways. Because see, if it's new, it's not true. Did you hear what I said? I said, if it's new, it's not true. Because my Bible said, don't add nothing to this Bible. Don't add nothing. Don't take nothing away from this Bible. You got to preach the Bible. So if it's new, that's not true. And what I'm looking for, I ain't looking for something new. I'm looking for something that's true. 
That's the old time. Religion. Can I give you three characteristics of some old time? Religion. Number one, if you're going to have some old time religion, you got to have a man of God. It starts with a man of God. Notice here in verse number five, it says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Notice it says, Philip went down. Oh, let me throw something in here. One of the ways that ministers often get off track when they start out, they want to hurry up and go up. No, 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 no. If you're going to be truly a man of God and going to help the people of God, you got to learn how to go down. Because let me tell you something. Even a rich man need the gospel. Even a rich man get down. Even an educated man get down. Even those that's got a lot to have get down. The big shots get down. Everybody get down. So if you're going to help some folks, then you got to learn how to go down and help folks get out of the mess that they in. That's, that's, that's what Philip did. Philip, he went down to Samaria. Now, who is Philip? Who is Philip? Well, you'll find out a little bit more about Philip over there in Acts chapter 6. In Acts chapter 6, you'll find out he was one of the first deacons uh, selected there in the church. They had a problem between the, the Jewish widows and the uh, Hellenistic widows. Uh, uh, they was being neglected, the Hellenistic widows, and so they took the problem to the apostles, but the apostles said, we shouldn't uh, uh, neglect the word of God to serve table. So look out among you and choose seven men, number one, of a good report, and then full of the Holy Spirit, and then of wisdom. In other words, they got to be wise men, men that are full of the wisdom of God. Uh, uh, what is the wisdom of God? When you talk about wisdom, we're talking about the application of the Word of God. It's being able to take the Word of God and apply it to everyday life. See, a lot of people know the Bible, but they just don't know how to use the Bible. And see, a Bible in the hands of a man that don't know how to use it, rather than helping people, he going to hurt some people. Oh, so he got to be a man that got some wisdom. But not only that, he's got to be a man that's got an honest report or a good reputation. Why is that? Because see, a person, particularly a preacher, he can draw people by his reputation. Amen. Or he can drive people away with a bad Amen. reputation. I heard a story one day about this preacher that had a bad reputation. He had a bad reputation for being a mean preacher. For being an unloving preacher, an unkind preacher. Oh, he had a bad spirit. But one day after church, and him and uh, this elderly lady got into it. Oh boy, he began to just pull up his little dump truck and he let her have a whole load full. Oh boy, I mean, he said some bad things, unloving things to that lady. He knew he'll never see that lady again. Well, six o'clock service that night, when the preacher came out to his surprise, Guess who he saw? He saw that old elderly lady sitting out there just looking at him. The preacher went on preach. After he finished preaching, he went up to her after church and said, Miss, and sister, I, I really didn't think I was going to see you again after that big conversation that we had today. She said, well, uh, this is my church, and I ain't no let." just anybody 
run me out of this church just because we got a devil in the pulpit. Listen, if you want to see folks saved, it's going to take a man of God and not a devil in the pulpit. So you're going to have to have a man of God. But number two, he got to have the power of God. Uh, the Bible says here in verse number six, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, what Philip was preaching, hearing and saying the miracles which he did. Notice, Philip was a man who was full of the Holy Spirit. That's power, ladies and gentlemen. And then he was using the word of God. That's power. That's a double bow right there. The spirit of God and the word of God. And it broke the spell that was on those people. Let, let me tell you something. The, uh, the gospel has power in it. Uh, just like Satan can put people under a spell by hearing the words of Satan, uh, God can put his people under a good spell by hearing the gospel. When you hear the gospel, then you're coming up under the good spell of Almighty God. And if, and if you've been listening to Satan, uh, uh, that satanic spell can be broken with the God's spell of Jesus Christ. Oh, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Just look at the Bible here. The Bible says in verse 6, and the people with one accord, everybody gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Notice, they said they gave heed. What are we talking about when they say they gave heed? It means to give heed, basically you are saying, to turn from and to be drawn to. Amen. Think about it. They was listening to Simon. But when Philip started preaching, it broke that spell when the gospel came and they turned from Simon and they was drawn to Philip. All because they heard the gospel. They are now under the control of Almighty God. That's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for in it is the power of God to salvation to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Look, 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 look. What was the people running after? Was they running after the miracle or was they running after the gospel? Amen. Well, the Bible tells you right here. Uh, 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 they turn when they heard Philip spake, hearing and seeing. Notice, they didn't come because, oh, we see something. They came because they heard something. News flash. If you run after miracles, you're going to miss the word. But if you run after the word, Chances are you're going to get a miracle. Oh, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Look right here at the text. Verse number seven. Matter of fact, when the gospel is preached, three things are going to happen. First of all, you're going to see holiness take place. It says, for unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that was possessed with them. And, and so what you see here is holiness taking place. Listen, when holiness comes in, unholiness goes out. 
Think about it. Think about it. It says, for many unclean spirits, not unclean spirit, spirits, with an S, because unclean spirits is more than one. There's a bunch of unclean spirits. And see, the average person is in bondage to an unclean spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If they're addicted to cigarettes, that's an unclean spirit. If you're addicted to alcohol, that's an unclean spirit. If you're addicted to drugs, that's an unclean uh, spirit. If you're addicted to fornication, that's an unclean spirit. All of that is, uh, goes up under the auspice of unclean spirit. But when Philip started preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, all those unclean spirits that would stand uh, got up and moved on out of there. And crying with a loud voice. How many of you know when you start really preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ, demons flee. They get out of there at the name of Jesus. See, when God is moved into a house, then he kicks the devil out of the house. So you got uh, holiness that takes place. Let me tell you something. If you're going to a church and your life ain't getting holy, then something is wrong. Because the word of God, the word of God is going to draw you or it's going to drive you away. you either going to get right or you're going to get left. When true holiness preaching is taking place. Notice, notice, you got holiness, but then you got healing take place. It says that many uh, taken with palsy and they that was lame were healed. So you got holiness and you got healing take place. Did you see that? People that was paralyzed got healed. The lame was able to walk. See, when you run after miracles, you're going to miss the word. And you're going to miss your miracle. But if you run after the word, you're going to get your miracle. So don't run after the miracle, run after the word. Lord have mercy. That's what happens when you set up under anointed preaching. When you set up under anointed preaching, there's holiness, there's healing, but there's also happiness. Look here in verse number eight. I'm in the Bible. It says, and there was great joy in that city. Do, oh, do you know what that word great joy means there in this verse? It means to be happy that I can't put it in the words. They were so happy, they couldn't put it in the words. And see, when those habits, them bad habits was broken in their life, they were so happy, but they couldn't put it in the words. When those addictions were broken in their life, they were so happy, they couldn't put it in the words. When the sin was broken in their life, they were so happy they couldn't put it in the word. How many of you know when God gets you out of the mess that you're in, you'll be so happy you can't even put it in the word. When God breaks the power of sin in your life, you're so happy you can't put it in the word. When you finally get your breakthrough, you're so happy you can't put it into word. When your life has been finally changed, you're so happy you can't even put it. You can't put it in the words. That's why one songwriter says, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No more chains holding me. What a blessing. Isn't it a blessing? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah, I'm free. Oh, do anybody know what I'm talking about today? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. See, with that old time religion, you got a man of God who got the power of God, but then you got a message from God. That's the third thing, you got a message from God. What is the message? from God that Philip brought to him. 
Look at the message in verse 5. Again, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. See, when sinners need to be saved, you just need to preach Christ unto them. Notice, uh, uh, what are we talking about when we say Christ? We're talking about the Messiah. See, the Jews, they was looking uh, for a savior. They was looking for the Messiah. Uh, they was looking for that person that God promised to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the promised seed that was to come and was to rule this world and get the Jews out of the mess that they was in. They was looking for this Jewish Messiah and that's exactly what Philip preached. He preached Christ unto them. Notice he didn't come there and preach himself. Amen. He didn't go down there and talk about himself for a month. No, no, he preached Christ unto them. He didn't go down there and preach politics, but Christ. He didn't go down there and preach religion, but Christ. He didn't preach Judaism, but Christ. Why is that? Because Christ is the only one that can bring liberation and freedom in our lives. In the same way, we got to just preach Christ. If we want to see people saved, we're going to have to preach Christ. Not what's popular, but Christ. Not what tickles the ears, but Christ. Not politics, but Christ. Not civil rights, but Christ. Not prosperity theology, but Christ. Not liberation theology, but Christ. Not white theology, but Christ. Not black theology, but Christ. Not women's lip theology, but Christ. Not the new theology, but Christ. Because Christ is the answer. Because who is it that can save us from our sins? It's just Christ. Who is it that can break the power of sin? It's Christ. Who is it that can tear down satanic strongholds in our life? It's Christ. Who is it that can heal the sick? It's Christ. Who is it that can raise the dead? It's Christ. Who is it that died on the cross for your sins and my sins? It's Christ. Who is it that's coming back again to rule this whole world? It's Christ. Who is it that can pick you up, turn you around, and put your feet on solid ground? It's nobody but Jesus Christ. I say it is nobody but Jesus Christ. I say it is nobody but Jesus Christ. It's not Buddha, it's Jesus Christ. It's not Harry Krishna, it's Jesus Christ. It's not Confucius, it's Jesus Christ. It's nobody, I say it's nobody, it's nobody but Jesus Christ. It's not the apostle, but it's Jesus Christ. It's not the bishop, but it's Jesus Christ. It's not the reverend, but it's Jesus Christ. It's nobody, it's nobody, it's nobody but Jesus Christ. I don't know about you today, but I want that old time religion. I want that old preacher that's a real man of God who don't fear nothing and nobody but God. Who got, who's full of the Holy Ghost. He may not have a PhD degree, but he's full of the Holy Ghost. He may not have a BS degree, but he's full of the Holy Ghost. He may not have a bachelor degree, but he's full of the Holy Ghost. And he knows Jesus, and he knows how to give you Jesus. That's all I want anyway. Just give me Jesus.
That's why the songwriter said, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Oh, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for my dear mother. It was good for my dear mother. It was good for my dear mother. And it's good. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Good.